Let's talk about the end of Destiny's Child. Why did Beyonce leave? Well, there's no end of that Destiny's Child. Of course, of course, of course. Destiny's but, what, what, but when she went solo, that was a different era in her career and their career. So why, talk about that chapter. What happened there? So there was a strategic plan, again, talking strategy, that as their manager, I came up with, and each one of the ladies bought into. Because it's not, a manager is not a dictator. Uh, basically, at the end of the day, the artist has the control. Now, what's different with Destiny's Child is you have to understand their ages. It, anybody that think that an 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 year old is going to make million dollar decisions in the music industry is fool. The girl started at 16. So you think they were making business decisions? It blows my mind that people think at 16 these girls were making business decisions. They were artists. But I came up with a strategy that said, ladies, let's build the audience. And how we build this audience is in between each album. And this also will build your personal growth as an artist in between each Destiny's Child album. Michelle, what is your passion of music, genre of music? I love gospel, I grew up in the church. Kelly, what's your genre? I love pop music. Beyonce, what's your genre? I love R&B. In between every Destiny's Child album, there were three solo albums. That was a strategy. The strategy was to bring a bigger base the strategy was to make the, each one of the ladies gain more confidence. And the strategy is I knew, they didn't know this, I knew that one day this would outgrow each other. So I wanted everybody to have a fair opportunity for when that happened, that they had a solo career. Michelle has had four number one gospel albums. It angers me that people will not acknowledge in our business, I don't care if you're a polka artist. If it's number one, it's number one. That means you're the best polka artist there are. There is. Kelly had extreme success international as a pop artist. To this day, Australia, she dominates. And Beyonce, we know that story. Beyonce <laughs> has been, since, since this period we're talking about, perhaps the number one recording artist in the world certainly the biggest and most interesting career that we've ever seen in this modern era. Talk about how you guided how many, her. How many albums has Beyonce? I, I, I don't know. I think it's over 100 million. Oh, I mean, different albums. I mean, how many different albums has she done? Yeah, five or six. I, I think it's around 10 or something. I don't, I don't know. But, but since this period we're talking about, Talk about how you guided her, because you continued to be her manager for many years. Um, well, the first three albums. Yeah. So, so, what were, so what was the strategy launching her into this solo career that became so incredibly successful? What were the, you know, what, what was the strategy? Well, for Beyonce, uh, the general of our strategy was the same for all three ladies. They're just, their genre of music was different. Uh, and, and it starts with having a great song. Uh, you can be Destiny Shaw, Beyonce all day long. If you have a whack song, the equals whack. So it begins for me, it begins with the song and, and going out and getting the best songwriters and the best producers in the industry. And another role of the manager, if you're really an effective manager, is you build relationships and you go and you find producers and songwriters. Uh, but, you know, I played a dual role. I was the executive producer, and the Destiny Child was a joint venture with Music World, my record label. So, you know, I played a different role on, on some of these records. But for Beyonce specifically, it was to go and get those great songs. She was developing because she's a Michael Jordan. She kept learning and learning like a sponge. She wanted to be and still do the greatest.